Hey everybody, just a quick update on my little hydroponics setup. Uh, everything's doing really well, except, uh, you know, Bobby says, set it and forget it. Well, I set it and forgot it, and things kind of went crazy. You can see here, those radishes are huge. And you can see that these leaves are kind of limp, and that's because I let the nutrient go way too low, and these things are drinking a lot. They kind of look like potatoes. So what I'm going to do today is... Uh, Get all these uh, radishes out of here and you can even see the basil's gone to seed actually here's a little photo I'll put it in the corner here of how this unit looked on let's see that would be January uh, 20th and today is uh, February 16th so you can see the difference on how everything has grown so fast so my main goal today is to harvest these overripe radishes and separate the roots from the other plants and uh, get it all back up to speed again. Okay, I removed the unit from under the lights and you can see they're hitting the lights and turning crispy and actually it smells really good with this lemon basil. But anyway, let me lift this out of the unit and start the uh, root separation process and I'll just rest it on these two boxes so I can get at it. There. there you can see the root system and that's going to be a little tricky to separate and I better get a paper towel for this. Well after looking this over I think I'm best off just trimming these leaves from the radishes one by one because they're so big. Let's see there and to untangle them from the basil, that's what's knotted up the most. Boy, these are big radishes. Well, I started the root separation process over here. This is a stevia root. And in back of that, this is a spinach root. This is a uh, radish root. Radish root. And actually, this one is popping through the net pot somehow. You can see there. And then uh, I have basil over here, and another basil. So I'm going to have to cut these and hope for the best. Okay, I cut the roots, and let's remove radish number one. Let's see how hard this is to get out here. Well, that's not too bad. Now that the roots are cut. And there you have it. Oh, what a mess. And there we have radish number two. Here's a closer look at the radishes. It wasn't my intention to uh, grow radishes for any kind of production. This was just to see how radishes would act in a um, deep water culture system. And as you can see, they did pretty well. And I should have picked these when they're the size of a ping pong ball. But now they're the size of a potato. So I'm going to slice one of these and give it a taste test. Okay, the radish nightmare is over. Got those monsters out. Here you can see my stevia plant, which is turning away from the cover of the radish leaves, trying to get the light. Here's a spinach plant. It wasn't getting enough light. It's kind of spindly. I'm, I suppose it'll perk up now. And then all of my lemon basil. This lemon basil is only about 30 days old from seed. And uh, you can see it. It's gone to seed, so it, that stuff grows like a weed in a hydroponics. If you ever want to grow basil, put it in hydroponics, and uh, you have more than enough basil than you need forever. So uh, let me get this under the lights and um, rearrange everything. Here are the tops of the basil plants that I cut off that hit the lights. And these are going on some tilapia tonight. And put it in a pan with some butter, some cracked pepper, some sea salt, and chop this up, sprinkle it on there. And man, that's some good stuff. I just rearranged everything, lowered the shelf a bit so the lights wouldn't hit the plants. And there you can see the basil, and the stevia, they'll straighten out. And over here, I didn't show you this yet. In that container there, I have two red robin tomatoes. And here's some very young red robin tomatoes. These are actually seeds from the red robins I grew in the arrow garden a couple of years ago. I just threw the uh, tomatoes in a bowl, let them sit on the shelf for a year and a half, and they were hard as a rock, so I soaked them in water overnight, 
and uh, got the seeds out when the tomatoes turned mushy. I didn't think they'd grow, but yep, they did, and those sprouted, so I'm going to use those in my uh, backyard this summer. And then this is stevia back here that was grown only in soil, and you can see the difference between these and this one here. They're the same age, planted the same day. This one was done in hydroponics and those were in soil. I don't see a difference, do you? The lights I'm using on this shelf are up here. This is a T8, the first one. It's a regular T8, not overdriven like my other ones. And the one in back is a T5 by Sunlight Supply. That was actually my first draw light I ever bought back in 2006 and it's still going strong today. And then down here I'm going to set up another area. This is an overdriven T8, which I'm not using right now. It's just as bright as the T5s, except they don't cost as much. And I'm going to be building a few more of those this year. And uh, stay tuned. Quick update on my Hoy tomato plant and hydroponics. I actually have a few tomatoes going now. Leaves don't look too healthy. They're kind of shabby. That's alright. It's at the end of its cycle. There's a tomato there, and there's a couple more in back. And it's crossing over to my rain tower. And you can see the lettuce down there, how well it's doing. And somebody built a uh, aquaponic version of this pretty quick. And I'll link that to you. It's on my website. And you can see all the details on that. It was uh, Dax from the Daily Paul. So uh, check it out. It's pretty cool. Okay, after slicing the first one apart, I found out that up near the top is the hottest part. So I'm going to cut that off first. And everything about meh, a quarter inch below is pretty hot. I'm just going to cut off here. And it's pretty soft. It's not woody. I just threw the radish leaves in my compost pile. And over here you can see an old pumpkin. And there's a banana. <laughs> That's all for this time. Till next time, take care everybody.